You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Ivan, please go ahead and get us started. Hey, I'm really excited today uh, about our guest. Uh, so I'm Zach myself, but we have Dr. Adam Little and uh, a colleague and a friend of mine uh, who's been uh, all over the innovative space in veterinary domain and now landed with the company GoFetch, which he is a co-founder and a chief veterinary officer. He's a former director of innovation and entrepreneurship at the Texas A&M he leads and founded projects such as Veterinary Innovation Summit and Veterinary Entrepreneurship Academy. Adam, welcome to the show. Good to see you again. Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me on. Big fan. So what's new in your world? I mean, you're you're so dynamic and moving all, all over the veterinary entrepreneurship. You, you know, what what is GoFetch? Tell me about this and uh, what are you what are you trying to conquer and achieve? Yeah, so I, I think one of the things I've been trying to do over the last little bit is actually like take some hats off and focus more on, you know, a, a particular project or initiative that I really think is the best way for me to help the profession. And what, what we're doing at GoFetch is building a subscription care model that we partner with vet practices to provide that does three main things for pet owners. The first is it lowers the barrier to accessing care by providing unlimited 24 seven support as well as unlimited exams. So when you go in for, for care, whether that's a recheck, an annual visit or a medical concern, those visit fees are covered. And the second is there's a loyalty component that acts a bit like a savings account for your pet. Uh, we automatically add dollars after every one of your vet visits and you can use those towards a future visit or you can actually donate them to help pets in need in the local community. And the last part of, of the membership is the ability to roll or break any vet bill into interest-free installments. So there's kind of this flexible safety net where if you have a big bill, a dental, a surgery, you're able to finance that. And we take on that responsibility directly with the owner so that the practice gets paid in full. So from our perspective, you know, we're really combining that access, those savings, and that safety net in a way that we think provides a really flexible and affordable membership option for pet owners while also empowering their local practice relationships. That's awesome, Adam. So it's a while since we spoke. I think I saw you in Vancouver yeah. uh, and I saw your wife, your wife's clinic in downtown Vancouver, just uh, probably late in the summer. Um, so what's been happening at GoFetch? And, I, and maybe talk about that unique kind of advantage you have uh, with having a wife that's a, a veterinary clinic owner and yeah. kind of how you can kind of help understand what the profession needs by uh, the person that you share a house with. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's sometimes it's a, a good Venn diagram because uh, she's definitely a much better veterinarian in a lot of ways, but our, our worlds are both tied together, but maybe separate enough that we can have our own, you know, individual journeys. I, I think for us, you know, there's a couple things. One is that for a program like this, we know that a lot of it comes down to like the clinic's ability to be successful with it. You know, the training of staff, empowering them to communicate it to their clients and just like making use of, of the full capabilities. And for us, it's like, how can you get in the tents, right? Can you have an opportunity to really hear and see that feedback, actually see the conversations that are helping with clients, uh, you know, listen to how they talk about your, your program, how it weaves in with the practice and kind of de-risk things before going to other practices. Because I think as uh, one of the common themes on, on this show has been, you know, the opportunity, but also the challenge sometimes of working with vet practices. And so it's nice to have a bit of a living lab where we can kind of push the limit and in exchange for, you know, a, a relationship where the practice is able to take more away from it. In terms of GoFetch, you know, the way that we kind of think about this is that, like, I, I think affordability is, is one of the core issues of vet care. And as we are able to do more and more for pets and there's more advanced specialties and equipment, are we creating a larger and larger gap for the pets that can actually afford that? And how do we serve those owners? And there needs to be more financial models and business models out there for care. You know, when you look at the penetration of insurance, it's low enough that you can start to say, well, actually, you know, maybe insurance is great for really big or unexpected bills. But if I'm looking for saving up for a $300 visit once or twice a year, insurance is not really great at covering the expected things. And so there needs to be sort of hybrid models that take the best parts of all different sorts of, you know, instruments, whether that's savings and budgeting, financing or insurance to develop a complete solution for today's pets. And, and I think that's what we're trying to build. That's really cool. And, and I, I'm totally agreeing with the hybrid model because, you know, insurance covers for the big things, but then an ongoing thing, and especially with the, you know, with the type of clients we're dealing with, most people, are, you know, most millennials right now, they're all used to subscription model. This is becoming useful. I mean, 
it's something that is, this is the right time. But it's interesting because essentially you're a fintech and then attaching it to uh, the veterinary model. And then on top of it, it's this sort of not with your hospitals because within the network, I mean, we're doing essentially similar in Galaxy Vet right now. We're, you yeah. know, the whole wellness membership, whatever way you call it, you know, the um, the modern animal is doing it, Bon Vet is doing it. So how do you go to market with this? Because I would imagine it's pretty hard to kind of go to clinics. And if and if the clinics are out there listening, maybe that's sort of the your softball to kind of tell them how to partner <laughs> with them. Yeah, no, I think you raised a lot of, a, a couple of really good points and, and ones that I just wanted to tease out for a second. So like the examples you were sharing with Galaxy Vet, Bond Vet, Modern Animal, I would say even going as far back as Banfield, it's been shown that, you know, these vertically integrated models powered by a, an underlying subscription business model can be really powerful. But in, you know, in the case of Banfield, looking back, you know, you had to own the hospitals, you had to own yeah. the technology, you had to basically manage the staff in order to almost like force those ingredients to work together. And it's a tremendous amount of work. And that model just kind of taking it as is to an independent practice, I think practices really struggle with it because they don't have all those pieces, they don't have somebody who can do accounts, you know, a bit billing for ongoing subscription models. They don't have these you know, resources in place. So we do things a little bit different. And I, I won't, you know, go as far as to say, like, it's, you know, simple and turnkey. I think we're going to get there. But we do some very specific things in our model that really lowers the barriers to clinics, like, trying this out and, and seeing that progress. So the first thing that we do is, as opposed to practices saying, like, Here's a blank sheet of paper, build your own wellness plan model, which often takes you know, months, if not years. There's lots of different opinions. What we basically say is, look, you know, our plans can be simpler in terms of what their coverage is, but because of the loyalty and financing, they're flexible enough to cover anything that happens at your practice. And so one of the things that we do is as opposed to going to a practice and saying, create like 20 different versions, we kind of have a more templated approach that makes it much quicker and easier to get to market without sacrificing the plan's ability to support more and more care at the practice. So that's kind of one big piece. The second piece for us is that we align our interests with the practice. So like we are part of that upside. We don't charge clinics in order to get started. We bake our fees into what we charge the members. And then we have a built-in incentive and alignment to make the program as successful as possible. We only make money if members only sign up. And so that's that's what we're able to do. And maybe the third piece there, just to, to wrap up, well, I think we're different. Through that business model, it allows us to have a much more significant upside from an impact perspective by monetizing the program through the pet owner, which means that we can invest in our clinics. For as an example, we provide all our clinic partners today with up to $2,000 in angel fund incentives through our donation program just for beginning the program. And that's $2,000 that they can actually use to subsidize care at their clinic for pets that need it. So we can put more money into these clinics. We can help them with other software capabilities, or other needs because of the value in having a clinic really hum along with this model, both for them and for us. So it's a bit of a unique take on a traditional wellness plan concept. The way that we kind of handle the program, the monetize it is different. And as a result, we can invest more than, you know, a traditional software company. No, no, I, lo I love it. It's, uh, it's actually one of those things that, uh, you know, when I was thinking about the next startup, it was one of those things. Uh, so yeah. Emmett and I uh, were thinking a lot about this model to have actually a wellness plan not attached to to the clinic it's actually on its own that it's 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 i think it's a really really clever way of doing it and i and i really like the donation piece uh i'm fascinated i'm reading right now uh drive by daniel pink and he's talking about how people are like that's totally from there that you know you can't motivate people by money but if that money that they could get as a bonus is donated somewhere else people might be more motivated for that so i, lo I love that piece but you you're probably running into the typical chicken and the egg you know it's a two-sided market right you need to sell to both yep. and what i've seen all the wellness programs struggling with is you know everybody wants them and but then everybody hates to sell them so how do you go to market in that perspective and how do you make it easy for the clinics to actually reach the customer base yeah no that's a, a great point and a fair question so i think that there's a couple pieces in terms of that chicken and, and egg situation um you know, right now we know that we need clinics. Like a lot of marketplaces, businesses struggle like where to start for us. It's pretty clear. Like you can't sign up for the program if we don't have a clinic for you to sign up with. And so the way that we start kind of in this phase of the business is by focusing on those clinics um, and really in kind of investing again in, in making them successful. And initially targeting their existing clients to become members of that experience. And there's kind of two main reasons for that. One is, I think, a little bit of a timing issue. A lot of clinics aren't taking new clients right now. If I go to a clinic and I say, like, here's a black box, you 
pull the lever and you get 10 new clients a day, they'd be like, get that black box out of my, <laughs> out of my clinic, which is really challenging for a lot of these, these sorts of businesses, because one of the primary benefits in theory should be like, we help you stand out as a clinic, we help acquire new customers, but that's not interesting for them at this stage. Over time, we think that is possible. And our model allows any pet owner to sign up with a clinic in a matter of a couple of minutes. So there is a really interesting kind of client acquisition piece. But for us, it's focusing on those existing clinics. And there's basically two ways that we approach that marketing. The first is we really try to embed ourselves in the workflows of clinics to make it easier for them to have that recommendation. And what I mean by that is it's really difficult for a front desk staff person to go from like a cold start to spending 10 minutes talking about this program. But if you have a client that said, hey, you know, during your pre-appointment emails, you mentioned this way that I would save money on this visit or because I booked a dental, you're talking about this financing option. It allows them to kind of build on top of like a curious client or a case that they really understand and then help them communicate the benefits in a way that doesn't feel like selling. I think this is one of the like, the most delicate and if we can crack it like important elements of our program you have veterinarians that are incredibly competent and capable of advocating for care that they believe in and they never consider it selling whatsoever right when they look at like a, an adult pet that needs a dental or they really believe in flea tick and heartworm they don't see it as selling in many cases they see it as what's doing what's best for that pet and so what we need to tap into it as a business is that sort of mindset where that same dental conversation now saying hey look it looks like you're on the fence maybe you're struggling with the costs this program allows you to you know, save some money. It allows you to break it into uh, payment plans. And it's part of that kind of initial conversation. So that's kind of you know, how we think about the clinic staff piece where can you nudge the clients around the visit so that conversation in the visit's easier? And then can you help really connect it back to how we enable care that they believe in? And then the last part is that we're actually giving like staff plans to staff members because we really do believe that in order for them to recommend it, they actually have to use it themselves. And one of the kind of, I, I would say, less sexy problems or less talked about problems in the vet space is like staff discounts and what you do with the sustainability of a business where people are in some cases making you know pretty limited wages or low wages maybe they're a part-time staff member and they have like a six thousand dollar bill for their pets tplo that you decided to let them finance and then they quit or they go to university or something happens and so from our perspective if we can actually do two things one is that using our platform develop a model that's actually better for staff members to get care at that practice without the clinic taking on that administrative burden and financing plus the ability then for them to experience the product so they're more willing to advocate for it um, we got some pretty cool opportunities there and then just to give you kind of one interesting example of how it fits together in our model we can provide incentives directly to staff members through their own GoFetch accounts for signing people up for referring other practices, for referring their friends. And those same dollars then can either be helping to subsidize their pet's care or donated back to the practice. So we create this kind of currency engine that allows a lot of the care to, to sit within the practice, but really reduce kind of the financial burdens around providing it. So that's a little bit of how we think about it. Yeah, well, it seems like you have got no less excited about what you're doing than when I was hanging out with you in Vancouver, which is great. But I've got a couple questions for you. Like this world that we're all living in right now, COVID and particularly COVID in the veterinary space where people are not taking on new clients, they don't have time to implement new software, they don't really have time to kind of like even have a lunch break. How are you guys going about client acquisition? today yeah. because a, a lot of the other people that listen to our podcast are probably wondering you know how you doing it yeah so like clinic acquisition specifically for us yeah so there, there's kind of uh you know i would say three channels that we, we we use today so one is that um we do get some of the benefits of like a geographic marketplace approach where you know you sign up one clinic in an area and if they have enough clinics around them you start to have members that actually go for different care to other practices and so I do think that there still is that geographic dynamic where if you have members that are coming in and requesting it or asking about it, there is a better chance that we're, we're able to get that initial conversation with those practices. So that's one piece. Um, the second is that we do have industry partners that, among other things, provide incentives or rebates through our platform that really help us you know, get the word out. So as an example, up in Canada right now, you know, we have relationships with Merck and Merck and other businesses, and they actually help to fund that angel fund and then create kind of time sensitive incentives for clinics to get going. I, I, I won't say it's easy for sure. And, and I do think, you know, similar to what other businesses are facing, you know, we have to think about not just what we want to accomplish with these practices, but more importantly, how we can tie our platform into an immediate 
to fix an immediate problem that they're facing today. So that's, you know, a couple of of, of ideas of how we, we think about it. Yeah, for sure. And then, I, I mean, shameless self-promotion next, Adam. So if there's clinics that are listening that are independent practices and they're like, wow, this sounds really interesting. Like, why don't you give them your like 30 second elevator pitch so you can take care of that and they can just reach out to you directly. Yeah. So GoFetch is uh, the subscription care plan that your clients always wanted, but you didn't have the, the time, effort or, or capabilities to provide. We take the best parts of wellness plans savings and financing and allow your owners to get more care while you do less work. And we take care of everything from support to sign up. Go to gofetch.ca. <laughs> there you go. Recorded. You can now uh, post it on your, uh, on your website too. Uh, or it's a pre put podcast. Those that monetize their podcasts, we, we don't. So um, another thing that I, I just want to kind of open up, which I discovered, you know, we have a very, uh, very similar model that we provide access to care. And then this is how I look right now these days at the, at the sort of membership or, or the wellness plans. It's, it's your providing access to care because care is not accessible today. And it's not only because yeah. of the cost, but also because there's, you know, there's not enough vets and, or as I'm discovering further and further, there's just shitty jobs and people don't want them. <laughs> so, yeah. but the, uh, the interesting part, which might help you in your pitch, I definitely use it when, when I'm thinking about, uh, about the burnout prevention. So, uh, Alan Robinson is one of, uh, one of, uh, my friends in, uh, in UK, he's very, very, um, a uh, wise and exceptionally smart guy in the in the management there they're tackling the problem of burnout and one of the experiments that he told me about they did in the clinic where they put the membership model in place they just said no to everybody who is not on membership model essentially yeah. if you're a new client you're coming in and you're on it that's it and what yeah. that does to the general attitude and the general client quality is basically bringing only the type of customers that are willing to spend money on their pet. Because if people are not willing to spend 30 bucks on their pet per month as a subscription, which totally tied to the services delivered, that means that they would not demand those services otherwise, and they would not take care of their pet. Anyway, those are the people that yelling at you in reception, you're doing it for money and you went to vet school, not because you love animals. So I don't know if you use that or do you see that as an angle to the whole membership yeah i i honestly think that this is going to be like a, a pretty significant shift in the way that care is provided i 100 percent agree with you i think i think the model of care like the way that i kind of always frame this is like we talk a lot about like what patients need what clients need like the model of care today doesn't work for vets it doesn't work for the support teams and and i think as you know you found in your research and just kind of listening to this podcast that like people that thought they were doing something different, maybe, you know, buying up practices, looking more at the financing side, they weren't meaningfully changing the experience. And it turns out that if you solve that, everything else kind of sorts itself out, right? And so I, I think it's obviously a big jump for like a normal practice to become a modern animal. Um, and maybe that's not possible. We're trying to help ourselves, you know, independent practices go there. But I do think to your point, if you have like the clarity and simplicity really is important for practices, I think, to resolve some of the like burden and, and burnout issues. Like, I'm curious, maybe you have an opinion on this as well. But when I see like the types of things that really bring practices down, it's all these edge cases that, you know, in some cases they've created for themselves. And I think that things like, you know, to your point, if, if clients aren't bought into their pet's care, or if they're not willing to like text before their appointments, or they're not kind of bought into the way that you do it, being able to say, look, we're just not a good fit for you. I think that you can begin to build a model of practice that is actually way more fulfilling to work in and probably alleviates a lot of the concerns and, and issues that people have on like a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm, I'm curious, it sounds like that might be part of the Galaxy Vet model. So you've probably looked into this a lot deeper than I have. But but for I mean, I, I want to be a bit even more provocative here. You, you mentioned something, not every, every clinic can become modern animal. Why? They already have a hospital. Like, I mean, maybe that's the model yeah. that you pitch to a risky, you know, uh, an entrepreneurial clinic in Vancouver, your clinic, and say, look, yeah. this is our wellness plan. And what we do recommend is that you put every new incoming. So Pendervet, my friend, Matthew Flynn, yeah. uh, in the UK, nine clinics uh, owned by also employees. And then that's what he did. He put in the membership plan and said new clients, when they come in, there's no other way. And he's not, my yeah. animal. he just implemented what you are providing. So maybe that's something that some of our listeners should say, Adam, let's try this. I'm going to put every new incoming customer on your plan because I don't want to manage it. And then let's see yeah. if we'll increase the quality of people that come in through the door. 
Like, let's not even focus yeah. on burnout. You just don't want people that don't care about their pet <laughs> for 30 bucks a month. That's that's it. Yeah, and I could take it a step further where if like there was a coach that was willing to do that, we'll actually pay out the annual subscription for that first month. So one of the cool things about FinTech is that we like in some of these models is like we're so committed to making this successful with your practice that if a person signs up for 50 bucks a month and you need that full six hundred dollars of that value of that subscription up front, like I, I think that there's models there to support that sort of strategy. I, and I, I don't know if it's I'm I'm curious what your colleague made that decision, but that that is like a conversation we broached the subject for. I love it personally. And if you get a practice that's willing to make that commitment, it's such a reflection of probably the trajectory of the program moving forward. They have to believe in it. And that's a great kind of objective thing that and then your sale it's like not the goal you know we were we were talking about the i'm just getting too excited about it but yeah you know we're setting goals and we we're looking at galaxy okay how many clinics are we gonna have well you know yeah. the, the banfield was 65 percent goal matthew flan since march he hit 48 percent on membership 48 percent of customers yeah just your next new customer you don't fire your old customers new customers come in if you want to be a part of this you want access you don't want to be in lines because you will filter out those that create the lines and we have enough customers yeah. today, as you said, nobody wants that black box of customers coming in. Well, why don't we not yeah. new customers, but better customers that care about their pets? And all of a sudden, we're not going to deal with, you know, people that, that hate us because we, we make money through being veterinarian. So anyway, I'm just yeah. getting too excited about this. I know. I appreciate it. That's a great, that's a great I got to cut you off. I mean, we make a promise for our <laughs> listeners yeah. uh, to be about 20 minutes every episode. And I think, you know, Adam's looking for somebody that's willing to try this. So reach out to Adam. He's ready to go. Uh, what a wonderful conversation, Adam. Thanks for joining us. We wrap up the same way every week. First question we've got for you is a book, a TED Talk video, something that's inspired you to be as hyper and as excitable about veterinary medicine as you are. Yeah. So uh, Ride of a Lifetime, uh, the Bob, I love autobiography, like biographies of, of like different leaders and, and how they thought about decisions. But, you know, this the former CEO of Disney, it's it, one of the things that's so interesting is like the stewarding of a brand over 100 years with like massive acquisitions that have completely changed and digitized this business. And he walks through like what it was like to have those conversations with Steve Jobs about Pixar and George Lucas about you know Lucas films etc. It's it's a remarkable remarkable story. Awesome, I'll put it on my list. Uh, and the other one, well, you know everybody in the industry. Who do you think we should invite? I can't believe we have you only now. Like we're 150 episodes, <laughs> and we just have you now. But we waited for you when you were excited about your newest project. That's <laughs> we'll cover that up. So who do you think yeah. we should invite that uh, you potentially haven't seen here yet or heard? Yeah, I don't know if you, you spoke with her, Sharice Roth. Um, she's the chief veterinary officer at Fuzzy Animal Health, and she's just like a remarkable individual. She has been kind of the first, one of the first veterinarians in a lot of these telehealth individual care companies and really set kind of set up those practices. And then she's also a, an author. She started writing mm. children's books um, to help, you know, kids in particular understand, you know, the role that vets play and the importance of diversity in the profession. And so I, I just think um, she's fantastic and um, would be a great voice. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.